Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Laura Bannon. I am the project manager for the Youth Climate Report. I am joined by our executive director, Mark Terry. Uh, and today, we are proud to present one of our partner programs, which is the uh, Ghana Youth Video Program. And uh, so we're going to be uh, talking about some films that we're going to be showing. Thank you, Laura. Um, I'm also a uh, professor at Wilfrid Laurier University, and you can see from the slide behind me, um, that's uh, our group of students and participants in the Ghana Youth Video Program. Um, this is a research project at Wilfrid Laurier University, and um, what we endeavored to do was to work with, um, with young people throughout the country of Ghana by making sure that they had the equipment and the skills and the tools necessary to make um, short documentary films that reported on climate impacts to their respective communities. Okay. So the Ghana Youth Video Program, uh, the Ghana Youth Video Program trained 12 young people aged 18 to 30 to make short documentary films ranging in length from three to five minutes. These films told stories of climate impacts to the communities in this coastal African nation relating to rising sea levels, flooding, and the way these natural disasters have changed the way people in Ghana now farm. Um, many of these videos um, are in the indigenous language of Akan, recognizing 2022 as the first year in the UN's international decade of indigenous languages, all films have English subtitles. And so coming up here, you will see uh, one of these films. It's the, called The Fight Against Poseidon. Let me start here. Right. Nation's capital, to meet the old, young, and entrepreneurs who have experienced life's changing events due to sea level rise, flooding, and erosion, in coastal communities and the socio-economic impact on their local community and the world at large. Sea level rise again okay at any place in the world. Uh, I've heard that because of the ice melting and this sea level has risen. But how much has the sea level risen is another issue. According to NASA, there has been at least four millimeters rise in the sea level per annum. But is this rise significant enough for us to be concerned? In the 70s, we started seeing that the sea had been so vigorous or boisterous, and the waves were so strong, and it was just eroding the land over the area. The erosion took away the four township, took away the small, small uh, villages or towns, again, like uh, my holy village, Azizanya, took them all away. To the people of Adafwa and its neighboring towns, what could this coastal erosion be due to? The effect of the dam on the river water has brought about this, the erosion over this area. Before the dam, every Around August, July, August, because of the rain, the river water will overflow its bank to Adan, and the water will enter the sea at Adan. The water will come so much that it will enter the sea and it will go on top because it is lighter than the sea water. It will flow on the, on the sea water up to Tema. And then towards uh, 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 Lobe. And then in that the, the same direction, towards the southern part, towards America. That's what we have been saying. Towards the southern. So many miles into the, into the sea. Heat volume of water gets into the sea almost every second. And it calms the sea, the waves of the sea as it moves in. 
at a dam, it's about 40 to 50 millimeters into the sea. The fishermen were telling us that on the sea, looking direct to the estuary, they could, they could get fresh water. The absence of that uh, discharge, huge discharge into the sea, is bringing about the, the strength of the high waves that we are getting. Well, when you watch the front view of the river, you see it's rough, very rough and very deep here. Yeah. And this river is just coming because of the sea waves, the sea tides that enter into the river. The tide gets very high and then it starts eroding the whole beach. About in a month, we lose up more than five to eight meters of land. Having lost his first beach resort by the coast of Ada, the CEO of Midas Beach Resort has hoisted flats and has been moving them inland with the erosion. He also uses temporary structures like chairs and the umbrellas to avoid seeing his investments being washed away by the sea. Moving through the deserted coast from Adafwa to Pute, nothing stops us from enjoying the fresh coconuts. For Congress time, built in 1783 by the Danes for trading, now stands in isolation since being washed away by the sea waves. Next to the traces of the fort is the building of Mr. Okanse, the merchant. His mansion was well spoken of in the late 60s and early 70s. Clashed from blocks, partly on the coast, with majority on the sea, abandoned magistrate courts in an abandoned town. Ada boasts of outstanding beaches and exquisite riverfront scenery. Millions displaced from where they once called home. The sea like an unpaid landlord driving away the masses and swallowing the rest. Now there is mostly nothing but sea, sand and broken frames left behind where life used to be. As you can see, that film was made by Emmanuel Kwegu Anin. So. Thank you, Laura. Now, well, all the 12 films made in this program are going to be screened at the COP27, and we have a special event, a special site event, I'd like to announce. Um, if you want to see these films, come out on Wednesday, November the 9th at 4.45 p.m. Uh, room 8150. We'll be having um, a presentation there with um, none of the filmmakers unfortunately could make it, but uh, their films will represent them. And just to speak a little more about this project, um, it was a research project out of Wilfrid Laurier University in Waterloo, Canada, and it was spearheaded by Professors Jeff Grishow and Professor uh, Magnus Mafofa uh, McCarthy. Uh, they worked together uh, along with myself to um, uh, select 12 uh, candidates for this uh, project in Ghana and um, some of them had film experience but most of them did not. So the, the idea was for them to use video to tell stories of, of climate impacts to their communities and whenever possible in their own languages, uh, not necessarily English. And um, the reason for this is we wanted to uh, bring those stories and the visible evidence of the flooding, the rising sea levels, and the impacts to the farms uh, to the conference in video form so that um, everybody here could see what's happening in Ghana. And we wanted to amplify the voice of youth as the Youth Climate Report does uh, with all its films. So the uh, Graduate Enhancement Program, it's another film program out of Wilfrid Laurier University uh, in Waterloo, Canada, as Mark said. Uh, and it trains its students to make short documentary films about the climate impacts in Canada and how they might affect the global eco ecosystem. And four young filmmakers produced films in this program and uh, then they've been added to the Youth Climate Report database. Uh, we spoke about it yesterday. It's a GIS map database. 
Uh, and then if you wanted to, or in keeping with this year's theme of showcasing films in indigenous languages, uh, one of the program's films is presented in the Inuit language of Inuktitut. And you can see all of the 2022 films uh, below at the tiny or at the bottom of the screen. Yeah, thank you. And uh, one of the films we're going to share with you today was made earlier this summer by a student at Wilfrid Laurier University. It's called Tick-Borne Illness by Grace Hood. Rising temperatures are allowing the bloodsuckers to survive through winter. A statement Toronto Public Health told Global News, the risk in Toronto of getting infected by a tick carrying Lyme is low. He doesn't even know how it, it landed on him, but it was probably in our tree. Bites can be prevented by wearing light colored pants and long sleeves, wearing closed footwear and tucked pants into socks, Health Canada approved insect repellent, and performing daily full body tick checks on yourself, children, and pets. Climate change is the number one cause of overpopulation of ticks, which has increased Lyme disease and other tick borne illnesses in the Southern Ontario region. In a 2021 study, over 1,487 Canadians have been diagnosed with Lyme disease. We as Canadians can stop the spread of tick-borne illness by decreasing the population of ticks in Southern Ontario, which can't be done without the fight against climate change. Okay, so that was just an example of one of the four films made uh, this year in the Graduate Enhancement Program at Wilfrid Laurier University. What we attempt to do with these various programs is to give young people that are passionate about the environment and doing something about climate change an opportunity uh, to make a, a documentary film about a particular issue that's important to them. We also try to reach out to indigenous communities uh, like we did in uh, Ghana and Ecuador uh, and the Arctic earlier this year uh, to amplify the voices not only of youth but also of indigenous people and to hear the stories that um, most uh, policymakers and even research scientists 
um, are unfamiliar with because a lot of these um, communities are situated in remote locations and it's very difficult to get there sometimes. So by bringing video evidence of what's happening there, um, being told by young people to the policymakers, uh, not just here at COP27, but even uh, locally, regionally, and, and nationally, um, helps solve the problem, helps address the problem, and helps uh, recognize the contributions of young people and indigenous land-based solutions and research. And so I for further uh, information, uh, please visit the university website, wlu.ca, and for the Ghana Film Project, we have our own website, ghanafilm.org. Uh, please visit that. And there's a couple of URLs there for the, uh, the Ghana Films. If you want to watch all uh, 12 of them, then um, maybe take a picture of that lengthy URL. And, uh, and for the graduate films, too, uh, we have an URL just for that. And uh, to email um, the principal investigators on this uh, project, there's myself um, and Magnus Mafofo McCarthy and Jeff Grisho. They were the principal uh, leads on this project. And um, Laura, would you like to wrap things up with a little talk about the Youth Climate Report? Yeah, so um, the Youth Climate Report, uh, basically Mark talked a little bit about, um, you know, how we, uh, we, our mission is to be able to bring youth voices, um, and as mentioned, especially this year um, um, and moving forward, especially indigenous youth. Um, oftentimes, indigenous populations are the most affect or, or disproportionately affected by climate change, and disproportionately, they're not heard and their voices are not listened to a lot. They're a marginalized population. So um, basically, as well as with just all youth from around the world, uh, we basically want to give the opportunity to have their voices heard, um, even though you know many people can't make it to the actual conference in person. We hope to at least be able to get their work, get their uh, their voices here in the film medium. So uh, yeah, we have our uh, GIS map, uh, which is a global information system. It's a, it's a database that has a bunch of films from these youth around the world. Uh, we have almost 700 films uh, from the past 11 years. And um, yeah, so if you wanted to check that out, you can see films from over the years. And uh, we have films from all seven continents. So uh, if that's something that you're interested in, please feel free to check it out. Great, thank you, Laura. It's very important that um, the structure of the GIS map um, houses all these videos because over um, a data set of 11 years you have a, a really good opportunity to do spatial and temporal analysis of the videos to see how things have changed and you see how different approaches um, to solutions are being made in different countries. So the, the structure of this uh, Youth Climate Report GIS map is known as a geodoc and um, it's uh, basically a, a multi-linear interactive database documentary film project presented on a geographic information system map of the world. So that's, that's basically the Youth Climb Report. You can see um, all the films uh, that we're presenting here at COP on our GIS map. Now I, I see we have a little bit of time left for uh, questions. Uh, if anybody has questions of myself or Laura, um, please go ahead. I think someone will be around with a microphone if, uh, if you want to ask. Yeah, here she comes. Any questions? All right, then. Well, thank you very much for your time. Thank you for coming, and um, have a great COP27. Thank you.